Hi everyone, this is Intro Stats with Matt to Show, and today we're looking at uh, using statistics software to calculate uh, statistics related to correlation and regression analysis. So last time we looked at the at the actual um, kind of some of the math behind correlation and regression, some of the famous statistics behind correlation and regression. Uh, now we're going to see that uh, how to calculate these with computer software. And this is really the way you want to do it. You really don't want to be calculating things like correlation coefficient and even slope and y-intercepts are very difficult calculations in statistics. So uh, again, always use a, a statistics software. So today we're going to begin using um, StatCato and StatKey. So I'm going to kind of show you both. Okay. So, uh, Let's start with StatCato today. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, let's start with StatKey today because um, they have a really, really nice program for just some basic statistics for the correlation study. So I have three data sets, three sets of data sets here. We learned last time that correlation and regression analysis is really a, a study of the relationship between two different quantitative variables, usually with different units. And that's kind of the key, what makes it so challenging. So we have to assign one of the variables to be X and one of the variables to be Y. Uh, we said last time that the X is often called the explanatory variable and the Y is often called the response variable. So we're looking at this first example. We're looking at the waist size. This is, came from my health data on my website. So uh, the waist size of 80 uh, random, randomly selected adults and their body mass index. So I want to see what's the relationship between the waist size of someone and the body, their body mass index. Is there a relationship there? Okay, so the first thing I want to do is copy both of these columns. When you're using stack key, you're going to want to copy both columns. Um, it can actually switch the variables, so it actually doesn't matter which one's on your left or on your right. Usually your X is on your left and your Y is on the right. Um, but uh, if we kind of look at this for a second, um, do I want to predict, remember the Y variable should be the one that we're trying to predict. So am I trying to predict somebody's waist size based on their body mass index or am I going to try to predict their body mass index based on their waist size? I'm going to go with the latter. I'm going to, I want to make the body mass index my Y because that's what I'm interested in and that's what I'm interested in predicting. Remember, whichever variable you're more interested in making predictions about should be your Y. All right, so I'm just going to copy both of these columns. I'm going to highlight them. Control C. Okay, now we're going to open stat key. Now in stat key, there's two things. Um, the, the actual hypothesis test for correlation is right here under randomized hypothesis tests. But today we're not really getting into the hypothesis test. We just want some basic correlation and regression statistics to kind of analyze this data a little bit. So that's under descriptive statistics, statistics and graphs. And these are obviously two quantitative data sets. So you're going to click on two quantitative variables under the descriptive statistics and graphs menu. Okay, so correlation is going to be two quantitative variables. All right, so now I'm just going to go to edit data and I want to delete out the data that's in there, right? So I'm going to do control A and delete. Right. Now I'm going to paste the data that I just copied. Control V is our paste. This data did have a title, so I'm going to leave header row. Header row just means title and push OK. Now what we have here is the scatter plot, right? We talked about a lot, a lot about scatter plots in the last lecture. So this is a scatter plot. We can see from the graph that the waist size has been set as the X and the body mass index has been set as the Y. And that's kind of how I wanted it. But if you wanted to switch the variables, you could. If you click the switch variables button, now you have the scatter plot with the body mass index as the X and the waist size as the Y. Remember, whichever variable you're more interested in making predictions about and analyzing error about should be your Y. So again, uh, I don't want it this way. I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. One thing I will take, I want you to take notice of, though, is the correlation coefficient. They, in stat key, they call it just correlation. So correlation in stat key is really the correlation coefficient R. And we can see that it's 0.88 which means uh, a strong positive correlation or a strong positive linear relationship. 
Okay, so, but watch what happens when I switch the variables. Everything else changes, but the correlation does not. Correlation coefficient is not actually based on which variable you pick as x and which variable you pick as y. You'll get the same correlation coefficient r either way. Now I do want to see the regression line. We call that the line of best fit. The line that gets as close as it possibly can to all of these points. So let's do that. I'm going to click show regression line. And again, I have waist size set at X and body mass index set at Y. You can always tell that when you look at a graph. The one on the bottom is the X and the one on the vertical, the horizontal is the, is the X. So that's, that's the waist size explanatory variable. And then the vertical is the Y, right, the response variable. So that's body mass index. And there's my regression line. Um, you can hold your cursor on any of the dots. So if you're looking for outliers, for example, in scatter plots, sometimes we see outliers, number dots that are very far from the line vertically. Um, so uh, again, you're really looking for vertical distance. I would not consider this an outlier. It's really close to the line vertically. But maybe this one, this one would probably be the one that's the furthest vertically. Um, this one's not that far vertically from the line. This one's probably the farthest, but I don't think it's, it's not what we call an influential outlier because my, my correlation coefficient is still 0.88, so it's very strong. Usually if you have a very strong correlation coefficient, you're not going to really have too many influential outliers. All right, so we can see all these numbers here, right? Uh, we talked about some of the formulas uh, that are used. You'll notice they calculated the mean and the standard deviation of the x, right, the waist size, and the mean and standard deviation of the y's. Uh, we, and here's the sample size. We had a random sample of 80 adults and all their health statistics. And then here's our correlation coefficient, of course. Notice they did not calculate R squared, the coefficient of determination. But you could probably calculate it yourself. And I, I think sometimes when I have my students use stack key, I just make them square 0.88, right? They just square the correlation coefficient. They do 0.88 times 0.88 on their cell phone or on their calculator, and they can get R squared. Here's the slope. Right? So there's the slope and there's the y-intercept. We learned last time that the slope was the standard deviation of the y's, this number right here, 4.959, times the r value, 0.88, divided by the standard deviation of the x's, this 13 right here. And that's how they got 0.33. So it's kind of similar. So they're kind of showing you what numbers you needed to calculate that slope. Also, the y-intercept we learned last time was the mean of the y's, so the mean of the y's was this one, 25.869, minus the slope, 0.33, times the mean of the x's, which was this number, 88.159, uh, and they got this number right here. Okay, so that's kind of giving you an idea. Again, remember, it's really important to be able to explain things. The correlation coefficient is telling me there's a strong positive, uh, strong positive linear relationship between the, the waist size and the body mass index. That also means there's a direct relationship. It seems like the heavier, um, the, I'm sorry, the, the bigger waist sizes do tend to have a higher body mass index and the smaller waist sizes do tend to have a lower body mass index, but it's not a cause and effect. I should not say that all waist size that are, 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 that are um, small are always going to have a small body mass index. It's not a cause and effect relationship. It's just a relationship. Now my slope was 0.33. We saw last time that that's the increase or decrease in the y per unit of x. So since it's positive, it's an increase. So the body mass index is increasing 0.33 kilograms per meter squared for every one centimeter increase in the waist size. For every one centimeter increase in x, the y is increasing this much. We saw that the y-intercept was the predicted y value when x is zero. So if a person had a waist size of zero, the y-intercept would, uh, the, um, the predicted body mass index would be negative 3.211. Now again, that doesn't make any sense, right? First of all, a person can't have a zero waist size and we can't have a negative body mass index. But remember, this formula is only accurate between 
you know, about six for waist sizes between about 66.7 centimeters and about what 126.5 centimeters. So again, that's when this formula is accurate. Zero is not in the scope of the x value, so a zero x value is not supposed to make sense for this formula. You would never plug in zero for, for the waist size. So this is actually a nice program. It actually kind of shows you the um, the regression line, it shows you the correlation coefficient, and I like really like this switch variables um, button. Let's look at some of the others. We'll kind of do this again here. Here's the, this one is for the, this is in my random sample of cars. So these are car, this is from the car data on my website. And I'm going to look, the weight of the car is going to be my X and the gas mileage, miles per gallon, is going to be the Y. And again, I'm going to stack key. So I'm going to go edit data, control A, delete, and control V, pasting the data in there. This data did have a, uh, a header row, a title, so I'm going to leave that. And there we go. So now we have, we can see a negative linear relationship, right? The points seem to be close to this line going down from left to right. That means you have sort of an inverse relationship here. So as the... Um, weights of the cars are getting heavier, the gas mileage is going down, and the, if the weights of the car are small, the gas mileage is going up. So we have sort of an inverse relationship here. Uh, we can see here that the correlation coefficient was negative 0.903, very strong. We said that, remember, any number close to negative 1 means strong negative correlation. Numbers close to positive one means strong positive correlation. Numbers close to zero mean no, no, no linear relationship at all. So this correlation coefficient R, negative 0.903, tells me there's a strong negative linear relationship between the weight and the uh, gas mileage of cars. I can see the slope was negative 8.372. So again, remember that's the increase or decrease in Y per unit of X. So in this case, again, the Y was uh, gas mileage. Again, I can see it over here in the graph. This gas mileage is on the vertical and weight is on the horizontal. So this is telling me that for every one ton heavier a car